I'm the other white me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, baby. Welcome, Hawaii. <laughs> hey, I want to welcome everyone to the Chef Rock Culinary Underground radio show right here on AM 690. The answer. What do we say? If we don't know the answer, we'll, we'll make, make it, it up. up. Yeah, we're here to lie to you all day long. So I did lie to everybody last week. I told them I'd have the website done. I'm still working on it. Uh, the regular website's up, but uh, I do want to mention... If you guys are around, uh, we already got quite a bit of a, a crowd gathering for Monday's taping of the Chef Rock Culinary Underground TV show. We're shooting five episodes up at the Polo Grounds, the Hawaii Polo Grounds, up in Molokalia. And uh, they start at 10 a.m. is the first show. Uh, we have guest chefs, mixologists, lots of food, lots of fun. And you could be part of the action. Just show up. We'll feed you. Just make sure you have a designated driver if you're going to imbibe. Yeah. I'm not taking responsibility for that, but we will have a lot of fun. Johnny Valentine will be there live with the band and a lot of surprise guests. we got some really incredible chefs lined up for Monday, this Monday, President's Day. There's going to be a lot of kids at the first couple yeah, shows. Yeah, this time. It's going to be yeah. great. Yeah, we'll be scooping ice cream. For the adults, <laughs> it'll be in the Cocoa Brown <laughs> cone of beer, yeah. right? For the kids, I'll probably have to throw a little brownie in there and some sauce. I'll make a little sauce for them. It's a beautiful thing. Well, today's an exciting show. Yeah. Yeah. We have a special guest with us. Uh, we'll be bringing him on later in the show, David Thor Newman. I'm going to ask him about the David part. Uh, that's a kind of an original name. Uh, but David is the owner of Pint and Jigger. Been there. Love it. Great food. Great yeah. cocktails. Great beer. Unbelievable. It's a great gonna, place. It's a great, let's just say it's a great place. And we're going to describe every little detail. He's at 1936 South King Street, right here in Honolulu. If you haven't been there, you're missing out. It's a really cool place. Yeah, it is. It's, it really is. I mean, besides the food, like, off quick story. Um, I went in there after, I believe it was the Southern Wine Spirits Convention. Yeah, you know, whatever. You did. Right? And I get in there, and immediately Dave comes over to me. He doesn't know me. Comes over and says hello. And, he, and I said, Hey, you know, I'm, I want one of your dark beers. So he says, well, hold on, i got a surprise for you. And he and I'm watching him over there in the corner. Now, he's the owner of the joint, right? He, and, but he's a, a superior mixologist and one of the most creative guys in the field right now, not only with the food, but also with the cocktails. So I see him over there with like a stick on fire, and I see it smoking. I'm going, what the hell is this guy doing? And I look, and he's putting it, he's got the beer in the glass, and he's inside the glass with the smoke, doing like the little rings inside. And then he hands it to me, and it's still smoking. And uh, I taste it, and it was the most incredible beer I ever had. It was smoked. It was smoking. Yeah. How cool. We're going to ask him about that a little later on uh, I want to hear about it. what yeah. other flavors you can go with and other styles. But they do all types of really incredible, Not it's not molecular cooking, but it's kind of like, uh, it's definitely state of the art, uh, the way they make their cocktails. Speaking of cocktails, weren't you a little busy last night? I was. What'd I you was. Do? I was. I had a tasting for Compion Tequila mm -hmm. at the Liquor Collection. Where's the Liquor Collection? And that's I'm not at familiar Ward, with that. Ward Warehouse. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh that's right. my God! I have to tell you, Chef. Lots of people. It is very eclectic uh, liquor store. You got to go. Ming and George run it. Okay. Uh, the people working there are amazing. I had a wonderful time last night. A lot of different people came in. And I was able to taste all three of the family, you know, the Blanco, Reposado, and Añejo to everybody. Uh, they're nice. Three young kids. Yeah. The whole family, <laughs> yeah, right? The, family the whole family in. was there. <laughs> you know, Mr. Año. I know, I know. Mr. Añejo, yeah. Mr. Esperanto. Yeah. We had the whole gang. But, you know, really, I have to say, if you want to go to an interesting liquor store, you, I mean, That's you just one. want to peruse the aisle and just check it out. They've got, it's eclectic. Well, you know me. I, I mean, amazing. I love stuff like that. You I like, do. I, I, you know, when I go to a different city, the first place I go is a grocery store. Not to buy, the look. I know. Like, you know, uh, my, uh, I started Instagramming. <laughs> you know, I'm so, you know, technically challenged sometimes. Not really. Well, I am to a certain yeah. degree. I had to have our neighbors, okay. you know, Richard know, Daisy, teach me because they're young people how to actually use Instagram. Is that sick or what? You know, but they got me going. I think I got 60 people following me. I don't know who they are, but for the and most where part. where are they following you? They're following me right now. They're outside in the parking lot here. I keep yelling at them. They won't go away. Go away. So I had uh, this opportunity to go into this one of the local stores here. And I, and I posted, I took a picture, and it was like pork brains in little packages. <laughs> and I thought that was kind of funny 
because I've seen everything from pig's feet and tongue and, yeah. you know, tripe, you know, and uh, pork bellies are really huge here. They're, yes, they're actually yes, hitting they the are. States, too, right? Well, you know, I think in some parts of California, they're pretty big, too. Yeah, they're uh, become, you know, probably in the last five years, like a, a mainstay on a lot of menus. And, and, and I like them. But you know, let's face what you're eating over there. It's like, you know, the, the best part of the bacon, like the whole belly, <laughs> you know. And I always thought, like, I always remember hearing about pork bellies from, remember the movie Trading Places with Eddie Murphy? And they were, he was a commodities broker dealing with all those guys, right? You know, and we're, uh, you know, we're down in pork bellies. And I, never, I always thought that was just a term that they used, you know, on what they were selling, you know, like the whole pig and all that stuff. And now it's on all the menus. Caramelized, maple flavored, you name it. Have a pork belly. Have a chunk of fat. It's good for you. Although I do love it. I'll have to admit. Nothing like a big old hunk of bacon. Oh, I, I remember when the bacon trend started. I met these guys at a, a food show, and uh, they were selling, like, bacon salt. But it was made from real bacon, you know? And this guy kind of started the trend. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, he's a millionaire now because they have um, all – everything's bacon-flavored. They do bacon ice cream. They do everything now. And uh, They were selling that at so the huge. WSWA. Remember when I, yeah. I showed you? They had the – you can do the rim, and they had all the bacon salt and all the different – Yeah. Well, we're going to find from Mr. Uh, David Thor Newman if uh, he uses bacon products <laughs> in his drinks. Okay. We're going to find all that out yeah. later on in the show. Okay. I mean, not too much longer, and we're going to introduce him. Right now he's doing push-ups. I don't know. The guy works out all the time. He's ripped. You know, He's cut like cheese, baby. <laughs> cut like cheese. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but it, this is fun because uh, our whole show is about introducing people who haven't yeah. been there to uh, new locations, mm-hmm. new chefs, new food, new drinks. So this is going to be fun because I have a lot of questions for uh, Thor. I hope he doesn't mind if I call him Thor. I think he might get mad. No, I don't think so. Well, why has he got that hammer in his hand? <laughs> <laughs> he really thinks he's Thor. <laughs> I'm out of control today. Who is this guy? Thank God Valentine's Day is over. If I see uh, you know one more chocolate, well, if I eat one more chocolate, maybe that's the problem. Uh, it's it's one of those things where, you know, hey, I'm not with my loved one right now, so it's, like, uh, kind of tough. Uh, but, um, you know, Janice knows I love her, you know. Uh, so I couldn't spend it with my, my loved one. But it, it was a day where I, I, I know a lot of people kind of go out of their way eating and drinking and, mm-hmm. and, and giving. You know, it's supposed to be a, a love affair type of thing, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's kind of taken over and become more for the kids. Yeah, you're probably right. I did see a lot of young people out last night. You know? Yeah. So that's a good night. When I mean kids, I mean kids that are 21 plus, but, yeah. um, you know, not an old fart like me. Excuse me. And um, we're going to have just have some fun with a, a, a young guy in a little while because he's young. How old are you, Dave? Uh, 40-ish. 40-ish. Like ish. <laughs> it's an ish. Yeah. You hit, when you're a little over 40 or mid early, it's always yeah, the yeah, ish part. It's the ish. Well, you know what? You heard his voice. That's Let's okay. introduce That's him. Okay. Okay. Dave Thor Newton. Now, was it Thorn or Thor? Is it Thor? Thor. Yeah. Given name. Given name. It was great until the movie came out. Yeah, I know. They screwed up for <laughs> you. Just, just totally ruined it. So everyone thinks now <laughs> that you uh, stole that from the movie? Absolutely. Do you um, go by Thor at all? Uh, unfortunately, I have a few friends that insist on calling me Thor. <laughs> In public? Yeah, it would be fine if I was three inches taller and had blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> get elevator shoes a wig will work we'll, fine we'll work it out you know well dave is the owner of the pint and jigger if you've not been there what the heck are you waiting for you do what, lunch and dinner actually we just do dinner now just um, dinner it's good just dinner so good, good. open at 4 30 every day 4 30 oh nice that gives you the whole morning to Sleep in, right, Dave? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just, you're not doing anything day. anymore, no. owning a place like, like, like that. Like he doesn't have anything to Nothing do, to right? Do. You know, you wake up, what, 4 o'clock, go open the door, let everyone in? Sure, right. <laughs> absolutely. How about 4 in the morning? Yeah. I know it's uh, it's quite a chore, you know, because you started out as a mixologist. I mean, you probably started out as a bar back. A bar back? Oh, really? Yeah. Where? Where was your first um, job doing that? 21 years ago, um, Southern California, working in uh, Ventura County. Nice. Nice, but that's how you got your training and your love for the cocktail? Yeah, yeah I was very fortunate. I had a, a really good mentor from the get-go at a place called Ristorante Piatti. Uh, they used to have like 17 locations. I think they're down to two. Wow. Downsize. Yeah, downsize. 
But now you you worked over here on the island first. I um, moved out here with Nobu. Oh, uh, nice. To open nice. Nobu Waikiki. I had worked at Nobu in Malibu previous to that. Oh, okay. What made you, like, open up a restaurant bar? Um. It was kind of funny. I was deciding if I was going to buy a house or open a restaurant, and I decided to buy a house. And my real estate agent, who I eventually bought a house with, told me that he wanted to open a bar. So he became my partner, and we opened Pine Jigger. Nice. Oh, how, many, how long ago? How, how long have we're you been coming up on two years? Two years. Okay. Great, because I was there probably about a year ago. I got you know, frequent a little, a little more often, but... Yeah, about a year ago uh, was the first time I was in there, and I actually have been in there since. Um, it's one of those places where you go in and you immediately feel comfortable. It's not an intimidating place, uh, and everyone's so friendly because everyone came over. They, you know, they came over to say hello, you know, and took care of me. They don't know me from Adam, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, they took care of everyone like that. I watch, I observe uh, the bar. Everyone's so friendly. And the food, unbelievable. You were mentioning earlier you just changed the menu. Uh, we just uh, rolled out a new cocktail menu last week. So, so far, so good. Well, what do you think the, b- the big seller is going to be on that? It's a drink called the Ricochet. What's that consist of? It's actually, it's funny that I think it's going to be the big seller because it actually has scotch in it. And it's really? a scotch, uh, Maletti Amaro, um, Dolan Dry Vermouth. And it's probably the most seamless cocktail I've ever made. Wow. Now, you created yeah. this? Yes. Yeah, so. You do all the drinks? Uh, the guys are, are coming along really well, so they're starting to, you know, to you know, get some drinks on the menu as, as we roll out new menus. Wow. that's inc- I, I saw the menu, and uh, it is incredible, along with your food. I just want to touch on one thing uh, while we got a few minutes before we break. And uh, I noticed on the menu uh, you do something with the cocktails that is normally done with the food, sous vide cooking, a sous vide process. Explain what that is to the uh, viewer out there or listener, and uh, tell us how you use that in a cocktail. Okay. Uh, sous vide process is actually, uh, I think, the French word for under pressure. Correct. And uh, you're basically taking generally food and vacuum sealing it into a plastic bag and then cooking it in an immersion circulator, which in simple terms is uh, a water bath that stays at a constant temperature and, and moves the water. A baby jacuzzi. Exactly. So just take your chicken at home and throw it in the jacuzzi and come back the next morning. <laughs> I like to actually throw stock in someone's jacuzzi <laughs> with some vegetables and just watch them go, what the hell's that smell in the backyard? It smells um, good. <laughs> so, so what I, happens? So obviously I've seen it with cooking. I know that process. How does it work with uh, cocktails? Um, barrel aging cocktails became really popular um, around 2011. Um, so be taking a cocktail, putting it into a generally used bourbon barrel or a new bourbon barrel that's been um, torched or seasoned, charred, yeah. charred and <clears throat> and letting it sit there for five months. Wow. Um, and I, I, I love the idea, but I wanted to figure out a way to speed up that process. Yeah, yeah. And I got to thinking one night about the difference between scotch whiskey and American whiskey or bourbon. And a lot of it has to do with climate. Um, an American whiskey... You can get it really nicely aged in four to six years. Where scotch, you need at least ten to do anything decent. So I was like thinking, well, what's the difference between Kentucky and Scotland? And a lot of it has to do with climate and temperature. So I wanted to introduce heat into the barrel aging process. So instead of taking a whole barrel, we took pieces of barrel, barrel staves and chips, and added that into the sous vide bag with the cocktail. No kidding. So Wow. That's state-of-the-art thinking. Mm-hmm. So Basically, in two days, we can get the same effects as barrel aging a cocktail for, no. for three months. Two days? Two days. Really? Well, I know, the, I know the process of sous vide, which is under that pressure of the water and the circulation, you definitely speed up the cooking process, but it also, hold, like in the case of a piece of food, you could hold a, a steak at medium rare for you know hours uh, and, not, and, and not have it overcook or dry out because it's in a vacuum-sealed bag in its own juice. It's not boiling in the juice. It's not simmering in the juice, but the juice is still in the product, like steak. Vegetables are incredible. Uh, to do a, uh, a, a liquor with the chips and all of that, uh, are you the first guy to do that? Uh, as far as I know. I mean, other people have sous vide cocktails before, but adding the barrel chips to kind of simulate the, the aging process, I think we're the first ones. Yeah, the only, the only uh, recipes I ever seen uh, with the sous vide was mostly uh, with the, the fruit, yeah. you know, and all of that in the sous vide process, maybe uh 
you're uh, in, infusing the pineapple with a, a, a grappa or something like that nature of that nature, but not with the chips and aging scotch. Yeah, no, we, I, it was something I had I'd seen at Nobu. Um, you know, they're doing sous vide eggs, which come out amazing. Right, right. But then taking something like ocean vodka and infusing it with pineapple, you can do that in a few minutes in the sous vide machine. That. So. That and that is so state of the art. Now you know, obviously, people want to come down. They're going to start flying down to your place now. Uh, you have food. Obviously, you said you're not doing lunch anymore. You're doing dinner, uh, but you're open late. You're not just like dinner crowd at eight until eight thirty. You're open till what twelve thirty on the weekend? Um, twelve thirty on the weekends. Last call for food. Uh, Eleven thirty on the weekdays, and then we stay open till two for for drinks. Because so many people that I know, you know, you might have an early dinner and then you want to actually go in you know maybe have a few cocktails and then you're hungry later on, right and there's nowhere to go for good food uh pint and jigger i think they got you covered now i mean i'm looking at your menu now and um man just <laughs> of course i go for the most fattening thing to me the most fattening thing on the menu is the beer battered oh no and french fries yeah. i gotta go immediately for that don't i why what is wrong with me okay i know good things you know, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm trying to lose some weight. So, obviously, I'm going to probably go with uh, the soft shell crab sandwich. Uh, I noticed you do a scotch egg. You know, I lived in London for a while. And nobody makes – I never met anyone outside of England that does a great scotch egg or even does it. And you guys do it. Where Do you, do you guys make your own uh, pork uh, riette? Yeah, we make our own pork riette. Um, it's a really labor-intensive dish. But sure it's is. so good. Um, Explain what it is, because a lot of people probably have no idea what a scotch egg is. Our producer is shaking his head. I have no idea. So it's basically a three-step process. We're making a pork riette, which is basically a French version of, of pork, pulled pork. We basically take a fork to it and scrape it so it's in, in much finer pieces. Um, and doing a soft-boiled egg, wrap the egg in the pork riette, panko crust it, and then deep fry it. Make sure you take the egg, the crust, uh, the shell off the egg. Yeah. I've had the unfortunate <laughs> incident of eating a uh, scotch egg that <laughs> someone made at a party and a little crunchy. No, but it, it really is uh, a scotch egg over in England is something that you'd probably get at a, uh, a lunch in a pub. Wow. You go for the plowman's lunch, you know, the cheese, the crackers, mostly a point of beer. That's what you're in there for. And then uh, the scotch egg is always a specialty item. But to get it here now, I think people would be pleasantly surprised it, how it, tasty it is. It pairs amazingly well with beer. It doesn't matter what beer. It just Any goes kind of well beer. with beer. Because you, uh, I notice on your menu you also suggest the beer that goes with every dish. That in itself is, you know, you know, with the onslaught of all these craft beers, most people only recognize a the name. They don't know the difference between, you know, this, you know, IPA or Hefeweizen unless they're, you know, a connoisseur or someone who has a little working knowledge. The average person who's going to come in for dinner and say, okay, well, I want this, and I have really no idea what to drink with it. You guys give the suggestions, but you change the beers, don't you? We do change the beers, so we, we try to rotate through, and, and we're always trying different beers with different foods to, to make sure the pairings work out well. Which ones are your, are your most favorite on the menu? I mean, you had like a spicy meat, uh, be, a meatball, a slider, a pan-seared pork sandwich, uh, ceviche, uh, what else you got on here? The pan-seared salmon, I'm sure, is probably a pretty popular dish. Um, we're definitely known for the burger. Uh, we Your burger. We ranked as one of the top five burgers in, in Hawaii. Really? Congratulations, because uh, I know a lot of places serve burgers here, and some of them yeah. do them well. But to be in the top five? Woo! Yeah. So our secret to the burger is beer. We uh, we actually use uh, bread, day-old breadcrumbs with, with Guinness infused into them as our binding. Nice. And then, and then we make our own beer cheese. Explain so, beer cheese. I saw that on your menu. So we take uh, cheddar cheese, melt it down, add beer, reconstitute it, put it back into slices, and slap it on your. No burger. kidding! Wow. So that sounds wow. really good. <laughs> okay, I can go for. We need to go there after. I need a hunk of cheese Here's right now. <laughs> can you melt it down, put it in a glass, and I can drink it? <laughs> I, might, I might be able to work that out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what? We're going to take a little break. When we come back, we're going to have uh, some more questions uh, for Mr. Thor. Uh, from the Pint and Jigger. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Chef Rock Show. I'm Chef Rock, and we'll be back after this break. This portion of the show is brought to you by... 
Aloha Shoyu. Taste the flavors of Aloha. Made in Hawaii since 1946. For more information, just go to chefrock.com. Don't forget the dot. Do you have a family member who's getting older and can no longer be safely left alone? I'd like you to get to know Visiting Angels. Visiting Angels assist senior citizens and adults to continue living at home and not have to move into a nursing home. Experienced, compassionate caregivers will provide your loved ones with assistance in hygiene, meal preparation, and light housework. Home care services are provided up to 24 hours per day at affordable rates, and you may select your caregiver before service begins. Visiting Angels has become America's choice in home care, with 300 franchised locations across the nation. Call toll-free today at 877-374-LIVE. To find an office near you, visit www.visitingangels.com. For home care for your loved ones, call Visiting Angels at 877-374-LIVE. That's Visiting Angels, toll free at 877-374-LIVE. L-I-V-E. Welcome back to the Chef Rock Culinary Underground Showground. I'm the other white man. Chef Rock! <laughs> yeah! Well, welcome back to the Chef Rock Show. I'm Chef Rock with our guest. Uh, we have Laura, of course, and uh, David Thor Newman, the owner of the Pint and Jigger. I just wanted to uh, thank uh, one of our sponsors, Aloha Show You. Uh, most people realize uh, it, it's basically in every restaurant, every grocery store on the island, on all the islands. It's Great backstory. You know, they were established in 1946 by five Japanese families post-World War II. And you know how difficult that might have been. Uh, but they survived. And they survived the competition. And today, they're the market leaders in soy sauce all through Hawaii. You know, they continue to expand uh, their quality product line of soy sauce. Uh, they also have their glazes and vinegars. Uh, you'll see them in every grocery store. Uh, they're one of our sponsors. We're very proud of that. Uh, we love the local community, and we love to help out. Uh, again, we will be taping five shows at the Hawaii Polo Grounds in Molokalia, uh, some great uh, Aloha Show You dishes right. that we'll be sharing. And what, what's fun about coming to our show is when you're an audience member, not only do you get to see the whole show and how it works in TV land, but uh, when I make a dish, it comes out of the kitchen. Get Chef Mary and Chef Joffrey in there cooking it up, and you get a sample. When we make a cocktail, you get a cocktail. And you get to listen to some great music. Come on down. We're shooting five shows starting at 10 a.m., probably going to dusk, and it's, it's a great day. Plus, it's President's Day. A lot of uh, the children are off. Yeah, off. Bring the kids down. We have, we have room for 30 to 40 people per show, so you can come on down anytime. Plenty of parking. It's all free. And uh, speaking of our guest, <laughs> that was a bad segment. I wasn't speaking <laughs> you can do of better him. than that. I no, know. I'm just kidding. No, you know, it's uh, David Thor uh, Newman is the owner of the Pint and Jigger. We were speaking with him in the last uh, segment of the show. We're going to come back to Dave right now. Uh, and um, one of the things that I wanted to ask you was um, how, I mean, the competition is so fierce here with restaurants. And you guys have basically established a brand. And uh, do you find that you, your choice of, of menu items, was that something that you had to become so not off the off the written page? But, uh, you know, you have some very interesting uh, items on here. Who, who's your chef and how long has he been with you guys? Um, we recently went through a chef change. Okay. Uh, so Brian Cortez is our new chef. We uh, opened the restaurant with um, Dan Cortez and Noah Blair. Uh, Noah is now in Kauai doing another project. Um, so they were basically co-executive chefs. Mm -hmm. And um, myself and other two, my two partners and the chefs spent a lot of time working on the, the opening menu. And um, fortunately, Brian is super talented, so he's kind of kept it going and, and taken it to the next level. 
Nice. I mean, I love I love the uh, variety that you have on here. And uh, what's nice about it is it's a place where you can go not just go for a cocktail or a beer, but to enjoy a meal. And you could bring the whole family in there, right, with children up till like, what, 8 o'clock? Then... Yeah, I mean, as long as you're not seated at the bar, you know, we were definitely family friendly. So. Which is great. I mean, I saw children in there. Well, they were 21 year olds. <laughs> kids. <to> kids. <laughs> These dang kids in their flying machines, you know? <laughs> now, they're, uh, it, it was a, a great place. I kind of felt like I was in uh, Chicago a little bit. I don't know why, but I just had that feeling because uh, it's a very clean, uh, streamlined looking place where you feel comfortable. Like, hey, you know what? Um, everyone's talking. Sitting at one big table, you could right share with other people. You get to meet new friends. It wasn't a stiff uh, bar that you know you you're afraid to speak with anyone. They have seats up against the wall, you know, with a little table there. That's where I sat, and I went, ah, this is great. I, I felt like I was at home, you know. And in Hawaii, uh, there's a lot of choices, um, but uh, your place definitely. Uh, fits the bill for a place where I would go, like, if I lived in your neighborhood, I'd be there every night coming for some chow and maybe a cold beer. Awesome. You I know? mean, that, that makes me really happy you said that when the partners and I got together and we did most of the build-out ourselves, we wanted a place where it felt like you left Hawaii for for an hour or two, like it's kind of an, an escape, and we wanted it to be really comfortable. And so it makes me happy that, that you felt that way. I, I did, and, and what's fun about it is that it, it's not, like, so over the top, like I felt uh, intimidated. Like I've gone to places in New York, Chicago, or L.A., and you walk into the place. I don't. You don't feel comfortable. You know. You feel like, okay, maybe I'm not dressed the right, right. way, or I feel a little out of place. You know, or oh, these all executives. You know, and or, or a bunch of lawyers are all staring at me. You know, it's like, you know, uh, but this place, it was great. Everybody stared at me anyway. No, I'm like, I'm like kidding. Superstar. No, yeah, it was, no, no, nobody recognized <laughs> me in there. Hey, as I said, we were talking earlier about that. You know, it's. The TV show's been on. You know, we're on K5 every Friday night at 7 p.m., you know, with the Chef Rock TV show. And uh, it, it's funny. Uh, it's been maybe, it's been about six months that it's been on. <clears throat> yeah. So, you know, it takes a little while for people to get used to the programming and all that. And I was uh, sitting down by the beach, Nimit Beach, uh, last uh, Saturday morning before the show. And it was like 6 in the morning. I wanted to catch the sunrise, you know. All right. So I'm down there, and I'm the only one there, you know, and I see some guy kind of, like, come out of the ocean. <laughs> he was like half wet, and he had a camera with him, and he was taking pictures of the sunrise. And he comes walking by me, and I just happen to be talking to my mom from Connecticut, <laughs> just giving a yak to her, you know, 6 in the morning. She's, you know, already made 15 pizzas and five gallons of tomato sauce, you know. <laughs> and that was at 4.30 in the morning. So I'm talking with her, and this guy comes walking by me, and he sticks his head in the window. He goes, hey, Chef Rock, <laughs> a local guy. And I was having the phone with my mom, and I went, what? <laughs> I go, that guy just recognized me. I don't know him. And I said, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. So, uh, again, you know, we're going to be doing the shows uh, this Monday uh, at the Polo Grounds. And uh, I know we have a, a lot of uh, uh, all types of people from all walks of life, from the military coming out uh, to the local people of the North Shore to our friends and family, and uh, friends of the chef. So come on out. Have some fun. I have a question for you, Mr. Thor. Any uh, plans on expanding? Oh, absolutely. Um, we are very close to signing a lease um, on Kapahulu down by the zoo, so closer to Waikiki for our second location. Wow. Hitting both ends of the uh, the Honolulu uh, DMA. Yeah, we're a little fr afraid to venture into Waikiki, so we'll stay on the outskirts. But you know what? It, to me, that's like uh, the best places, you know? I think if you're right in Waikiki, it's kind of got to be a kind of a touristy place, you know? And that's not the audience and that you'll draw. it's hard to get to, too, for locals sometimes. What was that? <laughs> Sorry about that. I turned to David. Yeah, you um, can't spin. You, your head spun around like Linda why, Blair. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, what it. is going on, Laura? No, I was just saying it's some, it's harder to get to for the locals too. Right. I mean, they don't want to They don't want to wander outside. Is is probably better. Plus, where do you park your the, car? Like, well, there you go. Downtown yeah. in Waikiki. I mean, every time I have to go down there, I kind of. I bring a bag of quarters with me. That's if you can even find a spot. <laughs> that well, is I, a meter. But I do a little New York. You know, you can pull behind the guy if it's a small car, put it in low, <laughs> push him up a little, <laughs> out of my spot. 
<laughs> no, I'm all like, and I would never do that. <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> Not on purpose. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, one of those places now that you're going to be at uh, where that end of the town can come out and hang out. Absolutely. We're, we're really excited about the prospect. So, um, will it be a mirror of your place? It'll be another pint and jigger. Um, we will have the core menu items, a couple of core drinks, and then a lot of new stuff to uh, kind of get people excited. Yeah, that's great. Well, you know, let us know when you're geared up to open up. We'll have you on again uh, right before so you can pump it. Awesome. And, uh, you know, we can come on down here and make sure all those cocktails are rightly made. That'll we'll work. Be By testing them all. Before you open, I'm talking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you need a couple of guinea pigs, and I mean guinea pigs, we're both Italian. You know? <laughs> you could use a guest chef. Yeah, there you go. Hey, we'll come on down. We'll eat a little. We'll drink a little. Bing. Bring some cameras. <laughs> yeah, bada bing, bada boom. Forget about it. It'll be a beautiful <laughs> thing if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, I thought I was going to go crazy over there. You know, we were talking about this the other day. It's like, why do most Italian guys are like bald in the back of their head? Yeah, right. Right? <laughs> there was a thing called the scoff when we grew up. It was like a slap in the back of the head, but it was like a cuff. It was like the hand would come down and do a U-turn, but it was off the back of your head. And if you're not if you're not sure what I'm talking about, watch uh, Saturday Night Fever. John Travolta is sitting at the table having dinner before he hits, uh, you know, the nightclub over there. And... Uh, he says something to his mom, and his dad gives him a scoff in the back of the head. Remember? <laughs> and it goes, hair. Yeah, he goes, Dad, what you doing? It took me two hours to do my hair. <laughs> and a lot of people don't notice it, but he actually has the tablecloth tucked into the top of his shirt <laughs> while he's eating. His spaghetti sauce. So the sauce don't go all over the place. It'll drive him crazy. You know, the girls don't like the sauce. <laughs> but, uh, no, that was a typical Italian maneuver. I grew up ducking my grandfather. <laughs> and, and it was usually for not doing the lawn. Hey, you didn't you come over to visit. You don't mow my lawn. <laughs> Scoff. <laughs> you don't hit your employees like that, do you? <laughs> no. I think that no. might be a good idea. Yeah, really. Well, not in front of the house. Not in front of the house. Thank yeah. you. Good. That's good. Uh, obviously, uh, one of the – I always hear this because, you know, I worked up on the North Shore for a while. Getting uh, superior help is a little bit of a challenge. Absolutely. Here on the island. Great ple- great people, but most of the great people are already working. Is it tough for you? I mean, now you're going to open up a second place. Are you going to be able to transfer some people that maybe lived on that neck of the woods? Uh, how's that work? Yeah, we're definitely going to you know, probably s- split up some of the, the staff so we can have the veterans training some new people. But um, we found now the people that are coming in since we're established is a lot better than, than when we first opened. Uh, we got a lot, had a lot of people that were green. Um, fortunately, they took really well to the training. I will have to admit, you know, when I was in there, everyone came by, you know, hey, can we get you more water, you want some, another beer, you want some more food. Uh, very accommodating but not overwhelming. I hate going into places where they're constantly on your back. And it's usually the really nice places sometimes, you know, where they, the waiters or the waitresses, like, right, constantly. You know, I got food in my mouth. I just, I don't need anything else. Leave me alone. I want to eat. But the proper trained uh, personnel will know better and watch and then observe and then hit you up when you might need something without having to ask. And you guys have mastered that. I'll have to tell you. When I was in there, I was I walked out of there, and I told you, too. I was very impressed with everything that was going on in the place. And, and I'm a, like you. I, I'm an observer. You know, I want to go in there, and I'm a watching. You know, I want to see how the food is served. And when you went over and did that smoke in the glass I didn't know what the hell you were doing. I thought he was like, you know, like flambéing my beer. <laughs> and uh, when you came over and said, "I just put smoke in your glass, man." Now, is that something you created? Um, yeah, we uh, something something we started doing over there. I had a uh, we serve what's called a Rausch beer, and it's a German smoked beer. Uh, actually, got a phone call from a couple asking if we carried it. I double checked. We had two bottles left. They said we'll be down for happy hour if you could hold them for us. So they come in. And, I serve them the Roush beer, and sure enough, five minutes later, the couple that actually called and asked me to hold the beer shows up, and we're like, oh, we're here for the Roush oh. beer, <laughs> and I'm just pointing at this other couple, I'm like, they're drinking it. Oh, no. So I felt really, really bad. Um, I had a bunch of different wood because I was experimenting with, with different stuff for the sous vide. I happened to have some mesquite, and I was like, well, let me see what I can do for you, and I actually just smoked a glass and, and poured a, um, at the time, we used a Alice Black Marlin Porter over the top of it. I tasted it and I just started laughing. So I served them and they were 
ecstatic. They took a picture, put it on Instagram, wow. tweeted it. Now uh, people come in and order it all the time. See, out of necessity came an incredible discovery. And I always tell people that too. You know, it's, you know, don't go by the standard run of the mill recipes, whatever, what you, what you really think everyone wants. And to create something like that out of the blue, oh man, if I had a hat, it would be off to you <laughs> right now, my friend. Because uh, when you served that to me, I, I had the same reaction. I went, wow. That, I mean, smoky. How original. And to come up with something like that is, to me, a place where you want to go to. You want to go there to the Pint and Jigger and, and experience. If you're looking at places like, uh, what's the name of that, the, the, the cool place in town that everyone wants to go to, but it's very expensive, the cave. Oh, yeah. The vintage cave. Yeah, the vintage <laughs> cave. Very expensive. I think you got to be a member or, you know, become a member. And I'm going, ah, you know, n- no offense to that, but, and I heard the food's great, but kind of small portions. Because everything in that kind of capacity is, you know, more of a, uh, an experiment, you know, uh, uh, with your taste buds. Uh, I don't know if you go there because you think that, you know, you're going to get like a 18-ounce steak. You know, you, it's not the kind of place and it's not the mindset you do go in there with. Uh, but when you go to a place where, you know, you get a, a, a nice meal and, and, and a great cocktail or beer, I think you feel satisfied. And I think people nowadays are looking to be satisfied. Because they ain't getting no satisfaction. <laughs> 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 I knew I, 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 it was in my head. Yeah. <laughs> and you know me. I, I get You're this, leading up to it. I got this sick head. No, but I didn't think of it, you know. No, but it's one of those, uh, uh, your, your place is a kind of a place where you can go there and, and leave full, satisfied, and excited that I can't wait to come back because I had something new. I, I mean, when I left there, I was, I was bragging the guy. I was calling friends going, you wouldn't believe what this guy did. But he smoked the glass for me, you know. You know me from Adam, you know. And he gave me something interesting and different to try. And I think maybe people should uh, take a little lesson from you uh, on that. Not steal your stuff, but uh, just uh, get a little more creative out there, guys. There's a lot of room uh, with all the fresh produce, fruit, fish, meat. Uh, I don't know if you guys are using any uh, local meats. We, Have we, you tried? We try to use as much local produce, meat, uh, dairy as we can, uh, wherever it, it fits in with, with what we're trying to do. And, right. then, you know, supporting local for us is, is great, whether it's, you know, University of Hawaii or, you know, charity foundations or, or the local farmers. That's great. Uh, we work with a, uh, a company up on the uh, North Shore, BJ's Butcher Shop, and uh, we'll talk about that in a minute because, I, you know, I don't know if you ever had uh, the venison from uh, Molokai. But we're going to take a short break. You're listening to Chef Rock right here on AM 690, The Answer. All right. I'm Chef Rock, and we'll be back after this break. This portion of the show is brought to you by Aloha Shoyu. Taste the flavors of Aloha. Made in Hawaii since 1946. Confessions of a Potentially Perfect Parent. Brought to you by AdoptUsKids.org. I might look like an adult, like a person who could possibly be a parent, but I have no idea how to talk like one. And everyone knows that if you want to be a parent, you have to sound good when you say things like, don't make me turn this car around, or because I said so, or don't make me come back there. I don't even really know what those things mean, but I know that I actually believed my parents when they said them to me. How did they manage to sound so convincing? Here we go. Don't make me come back there. No, that's not tough enough at all. Kids can sense weakness. Don't make me come back there. Ooh, yeah, that's better. In fact, that kind of sounded like my dad. Weird. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to listen to you practice your dad voice. Call 1-888-200-4005 or visit adoptuskids.org for more information. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt Us Kids, and the Ad Council. For more information, just go to chefrock.com. Don't forget the dot. Welcome back to the Chef Rock Culinary Underground Showground. 
Hey, I'm the other white man. Chef Rock! <laughs> yeah! Yeah, welcome back to the Chef Rock Show. I'm Chef Rock with Laura and uh, Dave Newman from Pint and Jigger. I uh, just wanted to thank another one of our uh, incredible sponsors. Another success story here on the islands, uh, Kona Brewing Company. Father and son team, Cameron and Spoon. I guess fork yeah. was taken. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, Spoon. I, well, I haven't heard of that as a first name. Either have I. Yeah, you know, it's a first. If you had twins, you, you call them Schvork. <laughs> you know, that combo spoon fork thing. No? Okay, enough of that. But Kona Brewing, obviously, everyone is familiar with it. It's it's a, one of those beers that has grown into almost a national brand right now. Everywhere I go, Longboard is turning into like the next bud. Yeah, Everyone's, it's everywhere, it, even on the mainland. Yeah, and they're just fascinated with this company. And the beer is great because I cook with it quite a bit. Uh, in fact, uh, we'll be cooking with it uh, this Monday, 17th, between 10 and 6. We're shooting live shows at the uh, Polo Grounds in Molokalia. Come on up. Be our guest in the audience. Uh, I will probably be doing everything I keep talking about is the uh, – Cocoa Brown and the ice cream sundae, you know, the Which float. I know. I'm excited. I'm going to do that on the show. Okay. Okay? So everybody could try it. And I said we'll do some little sundaes for the kids. But uh, as you know, they, you know, the Longboard is kind of their premier beer right now, but they also do the Fire Rock Pale Ale, the Golden Ale, um, the Cocoa Brown, as I mentioned. But Longboard's been their kind of uh, number one, probably most drinkable beer that everyone kind of shares. So if you're out there and you haven't had a Kona beer, come on. The liquid aloha, you know, <laughs> it's the most friendly beer out there. So give Longboard a try. Give any of the uh, Kona beers a try. We want to thank them. Also, uh, since we're going to be up on the North Shore, one of our favorite sponsors is Skydive Hawaii. These guys are incredible. You ever skydive, Dave? Uh, just once, but I'd le- love to do it again. Well, we'll talk, we'll talk to them over at Skydive Hawaii if you're going to go to the number one place on all the islands. Skydive Hawaii is the place to do it. I can't even imagine because I'm still over the weight limit, but I'm trying. <laughs> and, you, and you'll really be a rock. Yeah, they're going to yeah, – thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, they talked about uh, hooking two guys to my back <laughs> and throwing me out of the plane. But uh, that's incredible. Twelve. To, have you done the 12,000 or the 14,000? did the 14,000. Wow. That 2,000, I'm sure, makes a big difference. It's almost a half a mile more. It's Yeah, it's pretty incredible. So I'd, yeah. I'd love to go up there and, and well, we'll talk to them. See if we could, you know, we could have a pint and jigger night, you know, and we'll throw oh, no. out, we'll throw your whole <laughs> throw your whole crew out the plane. <laughs> but they're up there at the Dillingham uh, Air Base, uh, right above the Hawaii Polo Grounds. And uh, during the polo season, they do the halftime show, so they all come flying in. And we were running the uh, the kitchen the last season, and uh, I always remember uh, the the people that were kind of rookies that always throw one out and. Uh, they would come in like ear to ear grin, like they just won the lottery, and we go, "How was it? The the best experience of their life, or that changed my life? It was something I wanted to do my whole life." We have a, a chef that's actually leaving the island, and she that was one thing she wanted to do before she left. She went up um, there and she said the way they treated her, the whole experience was just phenomenal. Yeah, and there's other places on the island, but nobody is better than Skydive Hawaii. That's where you want to go. They do it right. They give you the training. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to it. One of these days, and I'm going to put like one of those camcorders. No, no, if I pass out, I hope the guy slaps me and wakes me up. But that would be kind of embarrassing. You know, I, he took I, a I, nap, a I, short I, I, nap. A short nap till we landed. <laughs> no, it's one of those places where just the North Shore is so gorgeous to begin with. I think that if you want to uh, do skydiving, that's the place. <laughs> to me, that's the place to do it. And uh, all you got to do is go to skydivehawaii.com. They'll hook you up. They do it every day. Just ask for them. Uh, tell them you heard it on the Chef Rock show here. Uh, let's go back. Um, we had a, a caller earlier in the show, and he had a question uh, for Dave. I believe it was Dave. Uh, that he was on your, on, on your website, and he saw that you have quite a variety of beers. What are your favorite beers, and what would you recommend to someone who was just coming in 
who maybe doesn't have uh, experience in the, all those uh, different flavors. Okay. Um, right now we have uh, 21 tops. We actually run 20 beers and one cocktail. Um, that craft beer is amazing. You can go to any regular bar or restaurant and get the beer that you always drink for $5, $5.50. But for $2 more, you can drink one of the best beers in the world, which is pretty incredible. There's nothing else you can do that with. You can't do that with wine. You can't do that right. with buying a car or a house or even having a girlfriend. Um, Say what? <laughs> but uh, yeah. right now on tap uh, <laughs> from Ballast Point, uh, we have uh, the Sculpin. It's an IPA. Um, got a nice little kick to it. It just got ranked uh, one of the best three IPAs in the world. Really? Uh, I didn't, I, you know, I'm from San Diego, and I, I used to drink at Ballast Point when it was a room the size of the studio. There'd be ten of us, and it was packed. So yeah, San, great San, place. San, yeah, great place. San Diego is just blown up for IPAs, and the beer scene down there has become some of the best in the world. Um, and we just recently added um, Old Rasputin on the nitro, so it's made pushed with the same gas that, that uh, Guinness would be. So it's a creamy uh, stout. It's absolutely phenomenal. And then Maui Brewing has just been doing some phenomenal things, and there's a lot of big news in the works for them. So they're they're pairing up with Stone. And so Stone gonna, Brewery. So no kidding. So they're going to actually start distributing. Um, so we're going to get a, a ton of amazing new beers in Hawaii. So I'm really excited. Which is a, an amazing thing. You know, uh, many, many years ago when I was traveling, you know, as a clever cleaver brother, and we were doing tours. I remember going into the Sierra Nevada area, uh, up there in the mountains, Sierra Nevada's, you know, the mountain range, and uh, we were outside of Humboldt, and uh, we were passing through, stopped at this place to grab something to eat, and it was called Sierra Nevada. And this is way before they were even bottling the beer. It was just keg beer. It was a microbrewery up there. And I remember meeting the owner who was an ex-NFL player. I don't remember where he was from. I believe the Raiders. And he was telling us, oh, I plan on bottling this beer and getting it out to all the other bars, you know? And now look at him now. I mean, it's like it's like Bud. It's everywhere. Sierra Nevada is probably distributed nationally just like all the other big brands. Um, San Diego became a, a, you know, a little further south. San Diego is, you know, from where I've spent many, many years, uh, an incredible place. It's launching so many, you know, breweries, you know, Green Flash. You know, obviously Stone was one of the first big ones. Ballast Point taken over the world there with that IPA. So that's one that you would recommend to this uh, gentleman who called in? Yeah, it's, if, if you come down, you're going to have one beer. At, that, that's the one I would choose. The Sculpin, do. right? It's Ballast Point Sculpin. Now, what's cool about Ballast Point is all the beers are named after fish. Yeah, fish are crazy things that come out of the ocean. <laughs> they, have, they have, like, sea monster. and Oh, they do now? Yeah. yeah. So. yeah boot. <laughs> Fishing boot. boot. I remember I used to work on the fishing boats out of San Diego, you know, in my youth. My ute. And uh, I remember one time, it was a big sport bit fishing boat, and this guy had lost his rod and reel over the back end while they were trolling. Uh, I think he put it. He didn't put it in a holder enough and uh, probably hit a wave, and the, and the jig you know, caused it to pull right out, and he lost the pull. And we were fishing that area. This was off of Clipperton Island. We were the first ever to fish uh, sport fishing in that area, ever. And it's an island off of Costa Rica, and it looks like a sail from the distance. That's why they call it Clipperton. And the big, sail, the big boats would go there thinking there was another ship, and they would run aground, and there was a lot of uh, castaways on that island, more than Gilligan's Island. And they, um, so we were fishing there, and we're fishing around the island. Two days later, this guy gets a hookup. Oh, and he's yanking it in. Guess what it was? The other guy's fishing ball. Wow. I swear to God. No. Three days later, this guy catches this guy's, you know, $1,000 rig with a two, uh, 2 0 pen reel, all gold and everything. And this guy was so grateful. <laughs> he's like, I can't believe it. You know? What so, are the chances? No. So all the fish are named. And I remember Scopino, which is a, a great eating fish, but very dangerous to touch because they have little spines on the back that uh <laughs> and i think i uh, i if i remember correctly they told me hey i've filleted a scope in for me and i got pricked by the uh spine and it like blows your hand up and it, it's so painful you know that you want to drink an ipa scoping <laughs> i wish they had it then yeah. but uh so that was great now mention the other beer that you uh talked about which was uh, the um, old rasputin that we pushed on old rasputin yeah on nitro so it's a, a phenomenal. So it's on nitro. Yeah. 
So that because that's what they push push Guinness out with. Yeah. Correct? So you can either push with with beer gas CO two or with nitro or a blend. We have a blender, um, you know, real short beer line. So you're going to get the freshest. So you're going to get the beer. freshest, right? And uh, obviously, people love Guinness. So you have all. I mean, you have a variety of dark beers. There. Yeah. So right now we have Guinness on tap. We also have a, a real nice double IPA from, I'm sorry, a double Imperial Stout from Rogue Brewery out of, out of Oregon. Rogue's taking off. I see them everywhere. Yeah, they're, they're doing really they got great, great labels, beers. too. Yeah. You got to admit their labels are awesome. Whoever came up with Dead Guy Ale name is just a genius. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible stuff. Uh, one other thing I wanted to uh, talk to you about, you had mentioned, uh, you know, the second location. Um now you guys sell merchandise, the hats, all that fun stuff. Yeah, hats, t-shirts, keychains, all all the swag, oh, all, all the swag. Yeah, got to get in there, get a little swag. You know, I'd wear a hat. Did you bring a hat for me? No, but that's okay. No, I'm only kidding. I'll I'll stop by. <laughs> pick, pick out a hat and a shirt. Pick out a hat and a shirt for me. Yeah, baby. Uh, now, how long have you been over here on the island? You, uh, this time I've been out here for eight and a half years. Eight and a half years. Now, what, where were you brought up? What area? I was brought up in just north of L.A. So, by Ventura? Yeah, Ventura. Oh, so that's the area you, you, where you first worked. Yeah. Up there. So I went to school in Santa Barbara and grew up in San Fernando Valley. Nice. I mean, I like that area. I mean, I spent 30 years in San Diego, so it's uh, one of those locations where it's just gorgeous up there. Especially once you get out of L.A., you know, it's it's. I mean, the shoreline is incredible. Ventura, Thousand Oaks, that whole area. I did a uh, Woodland Hills. Yeah. I did a golf tournament up there in Woodland Hills. <laughs> we came, we went up there with the whole film crew because we were shooting a show. Uh, my old partner, uh, Big Jim uh, Weatherly from from the Raiders. We had a show called Chef Rock and the Jock, and uh, we were doing a show with Iraq Stars. Uh, kind of a wo- type of wounded warrior program. We went up there in a big forty foot. Uh, Mobile home, you know, was, but I mean, one of those really nice, nice ones. All the roads. So they, we're trying to get to the golf course, and somebody told us, go this way, go that way. And we're up at like hairpin turns with this 40 foot tr- We had to back like about a half a mile all the way down. I don't know how the heck we did it, but the, our driver was incredible. Uh, it was, I mean, that whole area, it was just gorgeous. The golf course, everything. I mean, you kind of grew up in a really cool area, especially Santa Barbara. Yeah, I can't complain. Now I'm in Hawaii. It's probably the most beautiful place I've ever been, and I get to call it home. Yeah, I, that's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. Well, I want to thank our guest, Dave Thor Newman, from the Pint and Jigger, 1936 South King Street. Go visit. Lots of great beers, lots of great food, lots of cocktails, a lot of fun. Dave, Anytime, when you open up the new place, give us a little warning ahead of time. We'll have you on again anytime. I want to thank uh, Laura, of course. I also sure. want to thank, uh, well, th- thank you. Well, thank you. No, thank you. I want to thank uh, a couple other folks. One is uh, Ross Appliances. Ross Appliances has been around since 1975. Uh, they rebuild, clean up, paint, guarantee your appliances. They also supply us uh, our kitchen at the uh, Polo Grounds. And so go see, uh, see Bobby or... Uh, Taylor there, Tyler. T- they call him Taylor. I meant Tyler. We just got a refrigerator from them. They're great. Did you? They're great. Oh, Isn't wow. that great? There's your endorsement right there. Yeah. They got two locations, uh, uh, Wai- Wai- Waipahu and uh, Kalia. Go there. Hey, you're listening to Chef Rock Culinary Underground right here on AM690, The Answer, on KHNO. I truly wanna know See a woman was my girlfriend